What's going on guys, Shane here. Today we're talking about the jab and five common mistakes that I want you to avoid. So let's first talk about why the jab should be your best, most thrown punch. First reason is it exerts the least amount of energy, right? I'm just extending my arm. It's not a big exaggerated movement, therefore I can throw it throughout the entire fight, and you should be. Second reason is it's your quickest punch, because it's the closest hand to my opponent's face, so it doesn't have to travel long distance. Even the cross just has a couple more inches, but those inches, that time adds up. And the last reason is because it's super effective. It sets up the big punches, it gets them blinking, I can overwhelm them, or I can use it as a probe and see how they react. Maybe they're reaching for it, and then I can change and step in with something like a left hook, okay? Let's talk about how to do it correctly now. First, we're gonna be talking about more so a boxing stance or a heavy puncher. What I teach and what my preference is, is my lead foot, my toes, are facing the same direction that my hips and chest are facing. And when I throw my punch, there's a lot of pressure in my lead toe. So when I get full extension of my punch, that's when my foot touches the ground. Boom, it's in sync. My left hand and my left foot touch at the same time, boom, okay? If it's Muay Thai, what I like teaching and doing is keeping my toes facing forward or even out to the side just because I need to be able to check a kick, okay? In boxing, you're not, there's not leg kicks being thrown, so your quadricep, your knee is not susceptible. Or if you're fighting a guy that hasn't been throwing kicks, then maybe you can put a little more zing by keeping your toes on the inside. Just something to keep in mind and to experiment with. You're getting full extension, you keep the opposite hand up, you get slight hip rotation, but it's more so in the shoulders. The right shoulder pulls back as the left shoulder drills forward, boom, okay? Now let's talk about some mistakes now that you know how to do it. The first one is this, people aren't throwing it enough. Especially in MMA and in Muay Thai kickboxing, we're not seeing enough of the jab. Like I said, it's super effective. I can use it as a probe to see how they react to certain things. Are they flinching? Are they slipping? Are they more of a blocking kind of, kind of fighter? And the other reason too is I can really use this to keep them at bay, right? If I'm fighting an aggressive fighter and he comes out at the bell and, and rushes towards me, even if I just throw three, one, two, three, they don't even have to be super powerful, but it's a reminder to my opponent. If you step into punch range, you're gonna get touched with my jab, okay? So take notice of that. If you're watching boxing matches, you're watching MMA, kickboxing matches, the guy who uses the jab, the fighter that uses their jab a lot, usually dictates the pace and can control the range much better, okay? The second most common mistake is not getting full extension. If your arm is this long, that's how long your jab should be. Use that range, all right? If you're, if you're doing this, right, that means I have to be this close. That means I'm now in uppercut range, elbow range, hook range. Use this, all right? Like I said, it's your longest, it's your quickest, it's, it, it drains the least amount of energy, so get that full extension. And I hear people say they have elbow pain when they shadow box and throw the jab. That's probably from flexing or just overextending. You should get full extension, but don't go past that point, okay? The next is over committing, looking for power, or trying to make up for lost range by leaning into it. I see this a lot too, especially in MMA. People will come out looking for that power shot and they'll lean into it, put themselves in a bad position and usually get countered, okay? Don't overcommit. If you're too far away, make up for it with your footwork. Like I said, step in. If I step in three inches, six inches with my lead foot, then my rear foot needs to step in three inches or six inches, okay? So my full body is moving in. And also you don't wanna move straight in all the time. Create an angle, move out to the left 45 degrees, boom, okay? So you're not walking directly into the line of fire, okay? The next is a lazy retraction. Now, even if you're doing everything else correct, this one is, is super important because a lot of people have a strategy, they're gonna eat a jab just to land an overhand right because they know that you have a lazy jab. If you're doing this and you're looping it down low and then up, which usually happens in rounds two, three, four, right? Once you start to get tired, you do this. And you, even if you're creating that angle, now you're moving into their power hand. Very dangerous if you do that, right? Because boom, you get drilled right over top. Okay, so that's reason number four. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, mistake number four is don't do a lazy retraction. Bring it straight back, A to B, B to A. And then the last is you wanna make sure that you aren't uh, exaggerating or rather telegraphing the jab, right? You don't wanna do this, you see this a lot. They get a rock, they get that motion, they get that shoulder thrust into it. You should be able to throw your jab no matter where your feet are at, no matter where your shoulders are at. You shouldn't have to reset and then punch, right? I could go from here, I could go from back here, I can move a while backwards to the side. No matter what, I should be able to throw and pump my jab from wherever. Even if it's an up jab from here, right? I can still do this, Fully uses this one a lot, right? But even still, you wanna be able to throw that jab at any point. 
when you're, maybe your opponent's jumping in or you're catching them off balance. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully this answers all of your questions about the jab. If you have any other ones, be sure to click the link in the description below. It'll take you to uh, fighttips.com. We have a full article on there, and you can leave some comments on there as well, and I'll be able to answer them for you. Until next time, I'm Shane with Fight Tips. Self-defense for the underdog.